Good morning, Fort Alliance. Glad to join you or glad to join those who are online as well. First thing I want to do is just thank you to the worship team, but in particular, thank you to you like the worship team. I mean, we're just in this season right now where I can just sense God is stirring and moving, and uh, next week we'll bring some of that out as well and again. Um, but like, I genuinely want to be here. I know, like, I'm the pastor. I'm supposed to want to be here. But, like, <laughs> Pastor Dan, I bet you there's been seasons, man. If you're honest, I won't put you on the spot. But, like, I want to be here. Like, I want to be a part of that time together with you. Um, and it's a blessing to me. A couple of really quick things before I introduce my friend here. If you came in late, obviously things are set up a little unique. It's because we're running a six-week Hearing God course where we gather around these tables and they're all full and we're learning to, to hear God, to listen, to pray, to read His Word. And so uh, just the reality in a facility our size, it just kind of makes it work for, for this six weeks to be like this. And then the second thing I want to touch base on is I know that uh, we have our kids with us. Pastor Carlos was supposed to be here and ready to fully go today and he had just a horrible travel experience. It's not my story, it's his story. But it is what it is, and so we welcome you, uh, our kids. You are a part of our church family. Parents, uh, we recognize there will be a little more rustling of papers and, you know, noises, and that is okay. Like, we understand. I've been there, done that. Garth's been there, done that. Like, we're good. Don't worry. So uh, welcome to each and every one of you, young, old, everyone in between. And so I want to welcome my friend Garth. Let's welcome Garth up here. It takes courage to like step up in the midst uh, of a series like this to tell your story. And we're in, in a series we're calling Overcome. And it's because we, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, which is most significant for us to know and understand. And we're going to actually touch on that a little bit later on. Um, but we also are told in Scripture we're overcome by the word of their testimony. There's something about testimony that matters. It's powerful. It encourages us. Uh, it blesses us. It uh, uh, it, it pushes us, it helps us to be better, and uh, each and every one of us has a testimony, has a story, and whether we know it or not at this stage in our life, God is like moving in such a way, he's trying and striving to reach out, and he wants relationship with you, and your story is a story of, of God, you know, reaching out and you finding him, and also experiencing his faithfulness in the midst of loss, and so we're going to process uh, today uh, Garth losing his first wife to cancer, mm -hmm. losing her in a season where, you know, you had a young family, mm -hmm. God's faithfulness in the midst of that, and we're going to talk about, like, the journey and the excitement of life since that mm -hmm. season uh, as well. So as a, a means to get us rowing, going here, Garth, let's start mm -hmm. by you sharing with us mm -hmm. how you met, you know, your first wife. And sure. the story of the two of you getting married. Yeah, sure. Um, first of all, it's, it's an honor to be up on the stage here. And you're right, it's not easy to get up in, in front of everyone. And especially my family's here this time. Uh, and this <laughs> They're first, stuck with first, you, though, man. <laughs> I know. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, i got to really be careful what I say now. Like, uh, yeah. I was, I was freewheeling first service, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I learned things in the first service we didn't practice. Yeah. So it was great. I have to start editing stuff here. Uh, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I'm. Uh, uh, I met her in Winnipeg, but uh, I'm originally a farm boy from Saskatchewan, from a little town called Kelvington, Saskatchewan. So, anybody here, Kelvington? Oh, a couple people. Nice. Man. Do you know what we're famous for in Kelvington? A hockey player. Wendell Clark is from our hometown. Yeah. So we, we're, we got famous because of Wendell Clark. And, and I was able to grow and up with him. now today because of Garth. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was cool to grow up with him and our, our dad's farm beside each other. But I ended up um, getting into power engineering. And uh, so I went to Winnipeg to study power engineering. And uh, I had an auntie living in Winnipeg, so it was good, easy to stay with my auntie. Go to, go to school there and end up getting work there. And then a few of my, a couple of my buddies came to 
work. <laughs> it was just the three of us uh, renting a place and just having a good time, uh, really. And uh, which kind of led into me uh, when the, the night I met Lynn was uh, at a bar. We were we were drunk. <laughs> what can I say? It's where I was in my life, and. Uh, it was actually in the parking lot. We actually closed the bar down, and we were in the parking lot hanging out, and these three girls came up to us, and my friend uh, had one of these uh, Suzuki trackers, so that's a little, little four-wheel drive daily thing. That's a pretty, pretty cool little thing, made for four people, but we fit six in there that night, and, <laughs> <laughs> and the six of us went cruising after the, after the bar, and hopefully, hopefully our driver wasn't drinking, but anyways, it's... And then we went to our place, and then before the night uh, ended, um, I ended up getting this, this girl's number. And, uh, um, yeah, and called her the next day. I was, uh, you know, it was, you know, something was resonating there, so I called her the next day, and, uh, and things just kind of moved on from there. I was 19, year, 19 years old at that time. It was like 1990, at, uh, around that time. And uh, so, yeah, just start, started dating her, and uh, um, about six months later, she was pregnant. And uh, nine months after that, that result was right there in <laughs> Dillon. So that was back in 1991. Glad you're here, Dylan. Yeah. Stand up, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're off script, sorry. <laughs> So anyways, uh, it, it kind of fast-tracked, and we said we, we better get, get married and all, so uh, uh, we were both Catholic families at the time, and I was raised Catholic, I was an altar boy for probably over 10 years mm. back in Kelvington, so uh, my parents were diehard Catholic, and, and then her parents were Catholic too, and so they want to, wanted to get married before he was born, but we actually got married on his first birthday. Mm. So we had a birthday cake for him at our, uh, at our wedding night. You uh, had a built-in excuse to forget your anniversary. It was your son's birthday. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, I know, eh? Yeah, Brilliant. yeah, yeah. So play that card when you <laughs> had to, right? Yeah. So, uh, it w- so, yeah, we got married in, in, uh, in 2000 and, or not 2000, um, 91, 92. We got married in 92. Got it. Uh, in, 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 in Winnipeg, in, in the Catholic Church. And uh, in the meantime, we moved to Kelvington for some work, back to Kelvington. And then uh, we went to Fox Creek uh, in, in 1992, ended up in Fox Creek. So I think more people have heard of Fox Creek before, hmm. up, up old Highway 43 there. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So at, at this stage, though, you... Um, I, and you really wanted to stress, you wanted to be careful in how we, we, we touch on this. So, like, you, you had, we were raised in a Catholic family, you were an mm-hmm. altar boy. Yeah. Um, but the truth is, like, you didn't know Jesus. You did no. not have a, a personal relationship with him. Yeah. And it wasn't until after you and Lynn were married and after Dylan uh, was born that you, you found Jesus. Yes. And, and really entered into a, a relationship where, where it was personal now. Yeah. Tell us how that came about, how you came to this place of faith yeah. and knowledge of God, of Jesus, and yeah. his love for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try and do this without bashing the Catholic Church too much, but it, it really did keep me in the dark, the way they were sharing their yeah. And faith. that's your experience. Yeah, like, that's yeah. all we're saying. Yeah. That was your experience. Yeah, exactly. It's not every, it's just you. Yeah, it's our church. It was the priests we, or the, the, the fathers we had back in those days. Yeah. A priest. And, uh, but yeah, I was, uh, I met a guy by the name of Ray Newfeld. So he was also a hockey player. Anybody here Ray, Ray Newfeld back in the days? He played for Boston Bruins, played for Winnipeg Jets, played for Hartford Whalers, good, good hockey player. So I, I looked up to him, I idolized him. He was at my brother-in-law's place one evening, and uh, him and the, and he was a, he was a believer, you know, he was a strong believer, he was mm-hmm. very faithful, and uh, which I thought was kind of interesting too, you know, a famous guy yep. loving God so much. What's up with that, right? But uh, he started talking about uh, the rapture with his buddies there, and I'm going, what, what you talking about there? You know, like, 
I've gone to church my whole life. Mm-hmm. I never heard of this stuff you guys are talking about with, yeah. with that stuff. And they kind of look funny at me and say, well, like, you've read the Bible, right? I said, hey, I've been an altar boy for like over 12 years. Like, mm-hmm. I know my stuff. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Sorry. I, that was what my mind. <laughs> so he goes, well, he, he actually called me aside and go, you know, Garth, I, I can see there's a, some interest there. And what he recommended to me was go read the Gospel of John. Okay. And so um, because he was Ray Newfeld, I read the Gospel of John. I looked up yeah. to this guy. Yeah. And I thought it was really interesting how this, you know, popular, famous guy in Winnipeg was so into God and Jesus, you know, like that's not where I came from. Like yeah. we, there was never a connection between God and hockey where I came from. Mm-hmm. So I read the gospel and I go, oh, this is good stuff. Like this is really good. Mm. Like why didn't I get exposed to this stuff before? Like why? And so I told Ray, I said, this is awesome. <laughs> you know, this is really good. And he gave me a version that I could understand. I think it was an NIV version. And he says, well, there's three more Gospels. Maybe you should read those ones. And I go, I'm going to do that. Yep. And so I read the other Gospels and just, I was, I was into it. You know, and I was just said, this is awesome. And, yeah. and it was what I needed. Mm-hmm. And it kind of was kind of putting things together. And so I started getting in on creation science too and started just putting the whole puzzle together. And it was just so exciting to get awesome. truth coming to the surface, you yeah. know. Yeah. It was really good. You know what's really cool about this is I think this is something that's a, a first like an early takeaway for a lot of people here. Like yeah. sometimes we feel like we have to be a master of all things of the scriptures and God before we can like talk about our faith or share our faith. Yeah. It's not the case. Mm. Like it could be as simple as, you know, in relationship with someone that your your friend was saying, like, like, how about the Gospel of John? Like, why don't you start with that? Like, you were yeah. literally saved by reading the Gospels. Yeah. Like, that is totally. so cool and so powerful that yeah. God is using the Scriptures to speak yeah. to you in such a way that, like, you are finding and discovering Jesus. Oh. And that's something that, like, all of us who, who know Jesus can, like, actively participate mm-hmm. in, um, you know, just by introducing folks to the Gospel of John, let's yeah. say, to start, right? Totally. So that's such a, a great takeaway totally. I think for for many of us yeah yeah I recommend it today, today actually when I'm talking and yeah. somebody's interested I'm going you know I don't have to say too much but I said you know you yeah. really should read the gospel of John this just popped in my head sorry this is it's gonna sound silly but it's I keep a bible in my truck to mm-hmm. give away for mm-hmm. this reason yeah because I can't give away a bible I don't have yeah and so like I don't know when I'm gonna need it yeah so I just keep it in there yeah right like you never know yeah no, totally. Like I, I belong to the Gideons, and they hand out these little Bibles. It's awesome. Yeah. And little magazines. It's, it's fabulous when the information gets into the right hands. So it's, yep. Well, that's great, man. Yeah. Okay, so, sorry, I, I, that, was, that tangent was my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, but he gave me permission, okay? He said, like, it's okay. You can yeah, do yeah. this. Well, I do it all the time. So Anyways, it's okay. uh, So getting us back onto your story. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, after Dylan... Uh, yeah. You have two more kids. You have Logan and Brighton. Yeah. Um, but then shortly after, Lynn knows something is, mm. is, is off. Yeah. Um, eventually, you know, you mm. discover that she has cancer. Yeah. Um, and here you are in the midst of this crazy season, mm. young family, mm. young kids. Talk to us about what happened, yeah. what you were feeling. Like, uh, unpack that story for yeah. us. Yeah, I should probably mention in there too that sure. uh, Lynn was with, on board with me, yes. and we actually accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior at the same time. Yeah. So we were able to grow in our faith as infants up through to getting stronger, and which was, which was key, I yeah. believe there too. And um, so then we ended up having to, having to find a new church too. So. We, we just felt a little bit empty going back to a Catholic church, and we found a little church in North Edmonton called uh, Lighthouse Baptist Church, and there was a pastor there called Pastor Rose, and uh, from, he was from the USA, and real cool guy, and just an amazing pastor, pastoring this little church. And uh, yeah, so after um, 
Dylan in 91, uh, Logan, who's in the very back of the church, so they can make the easy exit if I make a fool of myself <laughs> with my other kids and wife. <laughs> um, Logan uh, was born in 95, um, and she's pregnant. She's going to give birth here in a few weeks, which we're excited about that. I'm going to be a grandpa. Cool. Yeah. And then Brighton was born in 97. He's also back there. And um, yeah, so we had ourselves a nice little family, and we just thought everything was just, you know, we, everything was going beautiful. Um, but then uh, in early 2000, uh, Lynn discovered a lump on her right breast. And um, she was only 30 years old at the time, so they didn't take it too seriously. They thought, you know, like calcium deposits or something, but just don't worry about it. And so we didn't take it seriously, uh, but it got worse. It got sore. Um, and she just knew something wasn't right there. So yeah. we almost had to convince them to do a biopsy on it. And sure enough, it was, uh, it was actually uh, an aggressive, uh, they call it a stage three aggressive cancer. And, um, and I guess it wasn't good because that's a cancer that they didn't really have a lot of success with for at that time anyways. Yeah. Um, so she had her mastectomy, had the, had the breast removed. And, um, and yeah, they weren't giving us a lot of hope at the Cross Cancer Institute at that mm -hmm. time. So we started exploring some, uh, you know, some, diff some other treatments, some other doctors. So we thought we, we found uh, a doctor that would have faith in helping us out. And then I also was researching uh, cancer clinics in Mexico, too. So the, our plan was if, if, this, if the treatments and doctors she was working with wasn't working out, that we would hike her off to Mexico and go through those clinics, you know, kind of as the backup plan. Yeah. So we felt comfortable with that plan. Yeah. And everything was going good for her. about five, five months or so. She was feeling good, like she was full-time doing her motherly duties, doing the laundry, house cleaning, okay. getting, getting groceries, right up to... About, uh, um, you know, 10 days before we had thought we'd better go to Mexico, but she just started feeling, feeling um, really weak mm -hmm. and uh, just no strength at all, no energy whatsoever. And it, it all hit really fast, you know, mm -hmm. so. This is like just a few months later then, right? Yeah, so she got diagnosed in June. Okay. And now we're talking end of November now. Wow. It's just all of a sudden, bang, something happened. Like, it feels like it got a hold of her immune system and just started shutting her down mm -hmm. almost right away. Okay. It was kind of weird so how it all cool. happened so quickly. So then we decided, well, we better go to Mexico. <laughs> you know, like, we need something quick. We need something. We need a miracle, you know. We need something. Um, so we, I booked the... I booked the uh, the time in the clinic, I got the plane tickets booked, we get to the airport, but at that time, she couldn't even keep herself held up. Wow. So the employees of the airline saying, well, we, we can't put her on a plane, like she's not good. And, and I had to confess to myself that, yeah, she's not good, like she, she's yeah. bad. Like they actually took her to the first aid room at the airport mm -hmm. and, and she was, no energy whatsoever, like nothing. And she didn't feel, say she was in pain, but just no energy, right? I ended up having to get a, an ambulance to take her back to, to the fort here, wow. to, the, to the old fort hospitals where we, they took her. And um, again, she was just declining so fast that the doctor saying, well, you know, they want to start pumping more chemotherapy into her and all that, or radiation. Well, she'll definitely won't survive, you know, some toxic, yeah. toxic chemotherapy stuff, you know. So we basically started calling family in at that time. We were calling in all the family from Manitoba, the family from Saskatchewan, and it was like, now you guys got to come here if you want to say, say goodbyes. So everybody started gathering, and um, we were all in Lynn's, hospital room uh and uh it was it was it was pretty 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 bad like her breathing started to get like starting and stopping mm. so at that point i i called home home was we were living in river point which is only a block and a half away from the hospital and okay. i just said mom like 
I think it's time to, to bring the kids in and, uh, and uh, they need to say goodbye to their mom. And so, the, so mom brought them over and I, I had a little talk with them in the lobby and said, you know, uh, Jesus needs to take mom to heaven now. And, uh, and they, were, they were good. They knew what heaven was. They knew that, but I think they had a hard time comprehending what was really going on. Yeah. So we took him, I took him into the, uh, to the hospital room, and, and Lynn was able to actually give him a hug and tell him, you know, I love you. And, uh, and vice versa, you know, and, and they said their goodbyes. And, uh, and so I, then I had mom take the kids out of the room because I didn't want them to see their mother take, take her last breath. Yeah. And so uh, her breathing started getting longer and longer to delays between these, uh, <gasps> these, these, these gasps. And... Um, and at that point, I, I took the oxygen mask off her face, and I just, you know, and I just told her, it's, it's okay to go. Like, we, we know mm-hmm. Jesus has you, right? Yeah. And uh, just when I thought she passed away, she, she gives another breath. <laughs> and then another 10 seconds go by or so, and I think, well, okay, that was it. She sits up in bed. And she yells, at, well, not yells, but at a pretty loud voice. She's, she sits up, her eyes are closed, and she's flicking her ears. And she's yelling, open the doors, open the doors. And then lays back down. Like she's sitting up in bed, like yep. from lay down, when we thought she was passed. And then she lays back down and takes one more little puff and then she was gone wow. right after that. Hmm. Interpret that how you wish. <laughs> we were dumbfounded. Or like, we, what did we just see there? Yeah. Like it was just... The, the physical and the spiritual has just collided, something, right? Something happened. It was uh, another power was in the room that let her do that. It wasn't on her own strength. I talked to my pastor, Pastor Rose was there, and he was saying, well, she saw gates, she saw doors, that's a really good sign, <laughs> which made me feel good. Another thing that he said that made me feel really good was that even with Lynn being in heaven for these short moments, if God gave her the opportunity to come back to earth, after what she's seen and witnessed and being in God's presence, yeah. She wouldn't come. She's in her glorious place. She's, in, she's at home. And she knows that the kids will be okay down here. So that helped me a lot too, knowing yeah. that, yeah, okay, no, she's where we want to be. Like, she's the lucky yeah. one, actually. Yeah. We're the ones stuck down here on this crazy, sinful earth, you know? Yeah. So that, that really went a long way for me. So I'm so thankful Pastor yeah. Rose was so close to us yeah. and gave me just great advice at that time in the hospital, in the yeah. lobby. And I shared it with the kids how, you know, like as much as mom loves you, she's in such a glorious place right now, yeah. thanks to yeah. Jesus. Wow. Yeah. Before we go to the next question, um, share, with us, share with us what Pastor Rose what, and you were just discerning what like the flicking of the ears might mean. Yeah, so what he was thinking like, this flicking was not, it was directed to us in the room, like to listen, listen to, to truth, to Jesus, you know, op- open up, you know, and like, so that was his interpretation of it. I like, I like that interpretation. Yeah. I, I think that might be it. He who has ears, let him hear. Yeah. I stand at the door and I knock. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, my first few moments in heaven, I'm saying, like, what? What was that all about down there? Like that. <laughs> You've got a couple questions. It's don't driven you? me crazy for a lot of years, you know. Um, so, and he'll tell me. He'll he'll know what it's all yeah. about, and yeah, and, and sure. we just accept that. So we're we were grateful to see that. I think it helps give testimony that there is yeah. a spiritual side of things. And yeah. then after she passed, you could really tell that her 
body was empty. There was nothing there. It was gone. It was like an empty shell. It was like an empty package, you know? She'd gone to the heavenly home, right? Gone, yeah. And you can tell when you look and see. like I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. And so it was not hard to leave the hospital room at that time, but it it sure was to know that you weren't going to see her again, you know, and in her presence. Yeah. So you are now at a completely new stage in life. Probably most, you know, young father's mm-hmm. worst nightmare. Yeah. Uh, you're a young man, young family, and uh, on your own. H- how do you <laughs> get through that? What, what got you through that? What, wow. what helped? Like, what, what was it like? I, t- talk, talk us through that real quick. I should also mention too. <laughs> Go ahead. That's okay, man. Um, good thing I got notes, man, because I good points I, I missed for sure. <laughs> um, we actually had two services for her. Yep. One was here for all of the friends and family here in the fort, and one in Winnipeg for all yep. the family back there. And each service was amazing. It was a, it was more of a celebration graduation of of Lynn's, okay. you know, graduating into heaven, you know, and. Um, you know, it was obviously sad, but it, it was also uplifting. And I had people come up to me afterwards at both services yeah. saying, I, it was hard to believe it was out of a funeral. Like, it was, it was glorious mm-hmm. and, and, and uplifting. And I go, that's exactly what we wanted for these services. Like, we don't want this passing to go to waste. You know, if we can actually wake up some people to the truth of Christ, then it's, then it's all worth it. Even yeah. one, it would yeah. be worth it. Yeah. So... So that was all, all really nice. But after and that is when it gets hard. Yes. Right? Like, cause, yeah. So tell us, what's going through your mind? What's going through your heart? Yeah. How do you get through this new season? Yeah. Well, obviously, we just leaned on faith like crazy. So, so God, family, friends, neighbors, they all came there. It was unbelievable. We had just food coming to our door. Um, I had neighbors coming, starting to build a nanny room for me in the basement. Um, my, my parents came for a couple, three months, uh, Lynn's mom came for, oh, well, both her, both her parents came for two, three months. So the first four or five months I had family in the house and the kids had family in the house. So it was, it was good. It was a good transition period, but yep. they had to go and, uh, we had to, so I had to find a nanny. So I was exploring all my nanny options and all that, and I thought I had to bring out somebody from overseas or something. So I was exploring all those options, but um, I was able to meet uh, through a friend, um, Beth Baker, who was coming to this church here at that time. And I met up with Beth Baker, and she was just just out of high school, I believe. And uh, yeah, she was all excited about coming and, and helping me get things back together again and uh yeah i didn't even need the nanny room that we we built down in the basement because uh what she would do is she would come in the morning help me get the kids off to school Mm -hmm. she would take the kids to school Uh, i had a home office at the time and then um she'd be with brighton all day and then in she'd make supper and then leave and that's how we did things for like a year Mm-hmm. At that time, worked out really good. Um, so we were able to spend our evenings just us, because our house wasn't very big. So it worked out good where we didn't have to share it with with a nanny, and she just came during the time we yep. needed her. It worked really good. And then we got uh, another girl named Janet King. Uh, some of you might know Janet King uh, also. That helped me out too. Um, and another thing that really helped too to get through all this was that the kids, because of them witnessing their mother. Um, what they did and were able to say goodbye to them and yep. they never cried for mom once wow. afterwards. No. And do you know how easy that made it for me? <laughs> no one needed your kids weren't crying for mom all the time. Like, they knew exactly where mom was. They knew exactly where they were going to go when their time was come. They were going to spend eternity with her. They understood all that. So they never actually cried. They never had to go to counseling. They never got mad or Negative, like they make pictures of angels in heaven and, and whatever, and it was it was yeah, it was really good. So so that helped a lot too to get mm-hmm. to get over it all. Yeah, and then we started looking for a, a local church just because uh, you know I just couldn't be driving back and forth to North Edmonton all the time. So yep. we went to um, 
I went to a Baptist church, and it was good and all, but uh, Beth was really bragging up this Fort Alliance church, you know, and this Fort Christian school, and this Pastor Dan guy was so amazing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Beth, well, we'll How go. About that, yeah, we'll, we'll go. We'll check out this, this church. And, and it was, uh, we're so happy we did. You know, we're so thankful we did. We, we, Pastor Dan came up to us right away um, at church, and he, he uh, asked you know, if he could come and have a visit at our home very, very quickly. And we just said absolutely because we just could see that this guy, I've never seen more genuine love in my life mm -hmm. f from a man that's just talking to you for the first time. Yeah. Like he genuinely loves you and cares yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yep, I know what you mean. And he came to our home and we just fell in love with him. And it was just slam dunk. This is our home. This is our church. And, uh. I still, he has such a soft spot in my heart right now with mm -hmm. how he helped us and our family and our faith. So uh, yeah. we just love Pastor Dan to death. Awesome. And uh, when he preaches up here, it's nothing against you, man, but he's oh. my faith. <laughs> All good. I can deal with it. <laughs> he's he's I, so good. I, I tell, tell people regularly, like, I hope I can be as strong as him one day. Oh, yeah. That's a good I mean it. Great thing to strive for, honest to God. He's, he's a special guy. Um, yeah. So then we, then I, it was about a year and a half, and uh, I said, well, I, I don't want to be alone forever. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> like, before we get into that, I just want to emphasize, like, God's been so faithful to you. Mm. Just the way things line things up, even amidst the pain, right? Yeah. He's been there. He's been yeah. faithful. Thank goodness that uh, he is such. That said, you um, you get to the stage where it's time, right? Yeah. Like, you want, uh, you know, you're looking for a relationship. How in the world do you do that, man? Here you are, <laughs> young man, three kids. No. Uh, tell us about that <laughs> journey of uh, reengaging in the world of yeah. dating, driving super <laughs> studly cars, <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, I didn't have a lot of hope for myself, to be honest with you. I <laughs> it took a real special <laughs> girl, eh? It did, it did. And uh, yeah, alert. like it was yeah. not, yeah. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of hope for myself. I just thought, you know, all the good ones are gone, you know, and who's gonna want a guy with three kids driving a minivan? two kids seat in it, trying to get a new fresh business off the ground, you know, like just <laughs> not very attractive, if you know what I mean, you know? So, but I had a pastor tell me once, you know, because I didn't want to get in no dating scene and all that stuff, especially no, when you got three that. kids and, and that, like, come on, I'm not going to, I just didn't want to do it. I just, so I didn't have a lot of faith. I didn't have a lot of hope. I would have been like, fine, whatever. But a pastor says, I don't, know, I, I, I don't know where I heard this from exactly, but he says, write down exactly what you want in your spouse, in your mate, and then pray over it and ask God and be very specific what you write down and what you pray for. So I did that. Mm -hmm. I, I put down 10 points of exactly what I would like in, in my new wife that could be the mother to my three kids and you just gave away the rest of the story <laughs> I'm sorry keep, I'm sorry keep going I know but but uh, it, so I wrote them down and I just prayed over it and um, before you know it uh, I met the next love of my life I yeah. it was through her auntie mm -hmm. it was um, her auntie uh, lived in the fort here, and her son was playing on uh, Dylan's hockey team. Okay. They, were good fr they were good friends. So she comes to watch her cousin play hockey, and there's, there's me, there's Dylan, and so the auntie kind of thought we might be a good fit, you know. But I'm 11 years older than her. She's just right out of college. Mm -hmm. I'm, I got three kids, like... But... She agreed to go on a date one night. And, wow. And uh, so we double dated to this uh, 
Bermuda cultural night, and uh, it was wonderful. Like, we, we just spent the whole night talking, mm-hmm. you know, and we just talked and talked, and we just, he just felt so comfortable with her, and we just, we just hit it off, right? So, and then just went to, to another date, and, um, and uh, what is it? Where am I at now? You're at the part where... Oh, yeah, the parents. Her parents weren't too fond of me at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't... Well, come on. Like, what if your 23-year-old daughter brings this 34-year-old guy with a minivan and four kids and say, here's my new boyfriend? <laughs> like, <laughs> take special... She's a risk taker, man. <laughs> she is a risk taker. She's a powerhouse risk taker. <laughs> Woman of faith. Yeah. And I said... Are you sure you know what you're doing here? <laughs> yeah. But no, she was she was awesome. She was amazing. It was like it was meant to be. It was. Because she was uh, she fell in love with my kids. She's saying, I, I couldn't imagine anybody else raising your kids but me. Wow. And her parents wanted to have a large family, but her father got into a, a, a truck accident, became a quadriplegic when she was two years old. They weren't able to have any more kids. Hmm. So see how this is all coming together now yep. where Garth comes into picture with a little bit of three kids, his luggage. Big family, and, uh, here we go. We got a head start. All of a sudden we got, <laughs> you know, it's, they got, they got their, their kids, you know, yeah. and, uh, and now they're going to be able to enjoy in grandkids and, you know, yeah. enjoying the one coming in a few weeks. You know, so it's, you know, God's, God's yeah. doing work in our lives coming awesome. together. Yeah. Yeah. You and Jody obviously uh, are married you start with three, but then there's more. It's like a double blessing. Tell us the rest of your family, how it all comes together. Yeah, like, Jode was, uh, became a believer back in, I think it was high school or college, a friend led her to the Lord, but then it kind of went stale after that. But once she met me and saw that I was, you know, kind of gung-ho on the faith thing, she it rekindled her, so it didn't take long for her yeah. to jump on board and become... Strong in faith also, which, which yep. really helped. We ended up being on the same page of equal yoke when it came to, yep. to, to our faith now, which it had to be. There was no way I was going to marry an unbeliever. At that point, with yep. three kids and where, and where I was, so it was very important to, to have a believer. So thank goodness she rekindled her faith, and she, it was like a breath of fresh air to her too. So it was, yep. again, all coming together beautifully yep. here. Perfect. Thanks, thank you, Jesus, you know. And uh, so... Uh, in 2004, well, 2003, I proposed to her. 2004, we got married, and uh, very quickly after that, uh, uh, Austin was born. Uh, in 2008, Austin was born, and then Jaina was 2012, and then uh, Jakey came in 20... No. <laughs> she's, la- she's laughing at me. Them. Let's keep going. 28, 2008 for Jaina, 2012 yeah. for, for Jake. So, uh, so, so Jake's in, in grade five there. Well, when you got six kids, it kind of happens in your head. You know, it gets yeah. all mixed up. But, uh, but it's glorious now, right? So I had boy, girl, boy with, with Lynn, and then boy, girl, boy with Jody. And it was, yeah, I, I, th- wow. I think that was pretty cool yeah. how that all came together. Yeah. But God's just had his hands on us ever since that time. And I knew he would because... He took a mother away from three young kids, and, and I just knew that because he did that, that he would look after us. Yeah. And he has done an amazing job, and we're so grateful and so thankful for what we have today. Like we, How he can take a, a death of cancer and then turn it into a family that doubles, and then the unity, and then everyone is so healthy. And mm-hmm. we, you know, like, yeah. It's that a total thing. double blessing, God's faithfulness. Yeah. yeah. And you had shared with me how that's the key. Yep. You know? Yeah. All right, last question we're going to head into here. You are well acquainted with uh, just the reality that we don't know what life is going to bring next. Yeah. And that really life for all of us, when you look at the big picture, yeah. is brief. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, what would you want every one of us to hear in regards to the, the brevity of life and not knowing what comes next? Yeah, like, like I said before, we, 
I didn't think tragedy was ever going to hit me. I, I just thought it was just going to be a rosy, glorious life all the way. I didn't even know what a tragedy was, really, like what it would be like to live through something like that. But it will hit you, and it will. And, and, and so it's a big mistake to think that everything's going to stay as is today. But nothing stays the same forever, nothing. And, and what I'm realizing is you need to know truth. You need to know, how, know the Lord, have things right with the Lord, because crap's going to hit the fan. Yeah. You know, because we're on this earth and God allows sin, we're going to witness disease. We're going to witness sickness. We're going to witness death. We're going to witness this very painful situations like how Lou shared with us last week, you know. Just, it's going to happen. And to be equipped with having the Lord as your Savior, to, you can get through all that stuff. And it, 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 no problem. Like, I couldn't imagine going through that passing of, of Lynn with the kids without Christ. Like, I, I think about it. Like, if I, was, if I was just an atheist and had to go through all that, and no, no belief, no God, no truth, it would be really bad. It would be really dark and deathy and, and be yep. mean and mad and, and revolt and get revenge, you know, like that's what I would think. But with Christ and knowing how he loves us, how he sent a savior, how he's got his hand on us and we got a relationship with God because of Jesus and we got the Holy Spirit within us, like it's just like, <gasps> yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. It's a perfect way for us to wrap up like you were introduced to the gospel of john by uh that hockey player you looked up to and john starts up off with uh, in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god and as you continue to read you see really quickly it's referring to jesus yeah jesus was god he is god and then it goes on to say the word jesus became flesh god became a human being yeah and then just two chapters later, for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. Amen. Whoever believes will not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. If you're, you're here today, um, God is faithful. He's been pressing into your life. He's speaking. He wants you to know him. And he loves you. And if you've never encountered that, it, it just begins by coming to Jesus and saying, look, Jesus, you know, I'm sorry. I acknowledge that I've, I've sinned. Will you forgive me? Mm. Now, here's my life. It's yours. No, I... Life is, is too short. It's too brief. We, we don't, we are, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more important that you could do than to just ensure that your heart is right with Jesus because he wants to know you personally. And so you can pray even in these moments mm. as we wrap up. And, and if you know Jesus, our, our hope, our prayer is that this has been a reminder mm -hmm. of God's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to all experience tragedy in some form, in some se season. It's just, th life is messy. Mm -hmm. You said it, right? We yeah. live in a world that's fallen. Sin has in infected. Yeah. Um, God has dealt with it through Jesus. And one day in finality, we'll deal with it. I was talking with someone yeah. before the service about, you know, when, we hit, when we're in that new heaven, that new earth under the benevolent monarchy of Jesus. <laughs> all right. Whew, yep. Now we're in the clear. But in the meantime, we... we we're in this, this battle. Yeah. And so our hope, our prayer is that you, you've been encouraged today that Jesus, that God, he's faithful. He's with you in whatever you face today. And so I just want to wrap us up. Thanks, Garth, for sharing first, man. Hey, we no really problem. appreciate you, know, you having pleasure. courage it was an honor. sharing. It means Thank a lot. Thank you. Right, let's close in prayer together. Jesus, for us here today who may be in a fresh way or who don't know you, we just start by saying, Jesus, we are sorry. And we pray, Jesus, that you would forgive us. We ask you to come into our heart, into our life. We give ourselves over to you. We long for that personal encounter, that personal relationship, you know, that Garth was speaking of. Thank you that you come and that you make that happen. We love you. And God, thank you that you are faithful, that even when life is hard, even when life is messy, you're present and you're walking. And even for me, and I'm sure for many others, this is a, a truth that means so much today. So I pray that uh, this reminder 
might encourage us to press on to today, press on to whatever you have for us this week, this month, and this season. We love you, and we are uh, humbled by your love mm. for us. Amen. In your name we pray, amen.